As we continue to cover the war between Israel and Hamas, we're going to take a couple of minutes to look more closely at the humanitarian crisis inside Gaza. This is video showing the urgent scramble for food in northern Gaza. This is happening near where more than 100 Palestinians were reportedly killed last week in a chaotic incident involving a stampede and Israeli troops. People in this crowd say they waited for hours yesterday in hopes of getting something to take back to their families. And we've been hearing these warnings about starvation and famine in Gaza almost every day now. The latest coming in from the World Health Organization that children are now dying of starvation. I've been to the Gaza Strip and one of our pilgrims that we go to, to Israel every time. I've been to one of them, to one of those pilgrims to the Gaza Strip. The, the bus driver, sorry, I'll have to stop. I have to mention this. I have to mention this. Look, the Lord loves everyone, okay? People, humanity are very harsh. The bus driver was a Palestinian Muslim. With all love and respect, I'm saying this. The bus driver was a Palestinian Muslim. The tour guide was a Palestinian Muslim from the Gaza Strip. But he hasn't been to the Gaza Strip for the past five years at the time. When I said to them, we are going tomorrow because there was a holy site which happens to be in the Gaza Strip. Which holy site was it? You read that in the Gospel of Luke, where those two men were walking back to their village and the Lord catches up to them. And he says, what are you guys talking about? He says, looks like you're a stranger. You don't know it is Jesus, the, this mighty prophet. Look what happened to him. He said, I am the Messiah, I'm this, but he, he was crucified, he died and they buried him. So we're going back to our own life once again. Looks like it was all a lie. So as they come into the house, the sun is going down. The Lord says, I'm going further. They begged him to stay with them. That house is turned into a church now. It is in the Gaza Strip. A mouse. The place is called Amaus. So we, I said to them, we're going to the Gaza Strip. They said, Bishop, please, this is, um, they'll kill us. I said, I don't care. We have the Lord Jesus, whatever the Lord wants, but I'm going. I said, Bishop, please, we are Palestinian Muslims. We are scared to go in there. And by the way, it is surrounded by a 15 meter concrete wall and there is a gate and there is the Israeli army here. The moment we go through the gate, we are on our own. No one will come to our rescue if something goes wrong. No one. No Israeli, no Australian, nothing, nothing. We were on our own. Till now, I think about it, I say, if it was up to me, just me, I would have gone. I don't care. But I had 55 people in the bus. But I took the risk in Jesus' mighty name. So we went, we crossed the gate, the gate is shut, we're in Gaza Strip, Hamas is there. <laughs> I don't know if they knew we were there, maybe they would, they would have, <laughs> we would have been gone with the wind. Anyway, I just want to say this, we drove, the bus driver lost his way because he hasn't been there for a long time. He lost his way, we came to a dead end road and I saw the houses on the side of the road all full of holes because of the wars throughout all those years the houses were you can't live in them but it was full of people living in them destroyed the houses as he was thinking how to go back and and, and navigate again i saw maybe a three-year-old girl came out of one of the houses she stood in front of the door i'm looking uh, in from inside the bus onto that girl i waved at her she waved at me I said, good. I said, bus driver, open the door. He said, Bishop, it was scary enough to come in here. You want me to let you out of the bus? He said, you know what will happen once you leave this bus? This whole town will come running at you. I will close the door and I'll drive away. I can't help you. I said, open the door. He said, I'm not taking the risk. I said, we pay you. You do as I say. Open the door. I want to say hello to this little girl. Palestinian Muslim girl, my sweetheart. Yeah, I don't care. This is a little angel. Stop killing little angels. 
He opened the door eventually. I came out of the bus. I said, close the door. He closed it. I called her. I said, I spoke in Arabic. I said, Habibi, ta'ahum. Come here, my darling, my sweetheart. She came. I had an Australian flag, just a piece of stick and a little plastic flag on top of it. I didn't have anything. I gave her that. It was as if I gave her the whole world. The first time ever someone giving a gift to this little angel. She was overwhelmed with joy. She didn't know what to do. She started jumping. And then her grandma came out. And as I was talking to them, I turn around. The whole town is running at me. In the hundreds, men. And the way they were running, I said, Allahu Akbar. <laughs> I said, my name is Osama Bin Laden. I'll blow you up. <laughs> the bus driver, Bishop, get in the bus. I said, go brother. I'm not moving. Let them chop me. What are they going to do? I don't care. I'm staying here. They came in a blink of an eye running. I'm, I'm literally running fast like a gazelle. They surrounded the whole bus and me in the hundreds. And they started saying, Nobody asks about us. Nobody cares about us. Nobody knows how we live. We are struggling here. Please, please help us. I went into the bus, collected some money, gave whatever we could give. And then they started saying, God bless you. God be with you. Thank you so much for coming and visiting us. Please tell everyone the way we live in here. We are starving to death. And they were. There is a lot of Palestinians got nothing to do with what is happening there. They just want to live in peace. And I'm sure on the Israeli side as well. I'm sure. Because I've met Jewish people, absolutely beautiful, very respectful, beautiful people, absolutely beautiful, from both sides, absolutely beautiful. I pray they come both to the Lord Jesus. They will find their comfort, their peace at last.